The Athena-class heavy attack cruiser is from our original science fiction series, The Drums of Atlant. Although this is science fiction, we made sure to base this ship on real, cutting-edge technology. With the first space elevator nearing completion, and with it a growing commercialization of space, humanity found itself expanding outward at an incredible rate. With this frenetic expansion came calls for greater caution. Initially unheeded, three events changed opinions, and fixed in humanity's collective psyche the need for greater defensive measures throughout the solar system. One event was an announcement by the Sindarin, the mysterious underground nation, rumored to actually be of extraterrestrial origin. The Sindarin announced that humanity was in grave danger from hostile extraterrestrials, who, they said, had already made several flights through the solar system. This sent a horrendous shock through the world and only swift and somewhat harsh measures prevented an all-out mass panic and collapse of civilization. Therefore, on August 17th, 2033 CE, Project Aegis was ratified in the first ever unanimous vote since the founding of the loosely allied Terran Union, which had replaced the defunct United Nations. Within three months, the scientists and engineers of the project had produced a radical new space warship design. A design that, it was hoped, would allow humanity to protect itself against the dangers of space. This warship was to be called the Athena, after the ancient Greek goddess of intelligence and strategic warfare. The new design would replace the now obsolete designs that were drawn up during World War III but only constructed during the end and immediately after the war, which had ended in 2026. The other two events that so shocked the world and spurred on development of spacecraft was the accidental introduction of an infectious microbe originally from Mars, believed to have been carelessly brought back by illegal space travelers. And lastly, the most terrifying event was the discovery of a very unusual energy burst. Initially thought to be another black hole collision, this was immediately dismissed when astronomers calculated the distance. The distance of the event innocuously labeled GA-38-2 was approximately equal to the distance from Earth to Saturn, coming from the direction of the Orion spiral arm. The Athena was designed to make use of the latest developments, with numerous new technologies, some developed with Sundaran aid, incorporated into every aspect of the design. Built around a spherical main hull some 226 meters across, the vessel sported a protruding drive ring, which extended the width to a total of 296 meters, and in which was fitted 48 antimatter catalyzed fusion engines of a radical design. Mounting the engines in four rings, each at a different angle, allowed the Athena to maneuver in any direction without needing to rotate. Abandoning a conventional nozzle design altogether, the new engines instead used powerful projected magnetic fields and plasma coil technology to hold in place immaterial nozzles made of dense plasma. This drastically increased the maximum operating temperature, and therefore resulted in a much higher exhaust velocity, efficiency, and thrust. 
This newly developed plasma manipulation technology was utilized to provide the warship with plasma shields, which are able to absorb or deflect enormous energies. By sophisticated manipulation of the plasma, a polaroton superfluid can be created, allowing even photon-based weaponry to be deflected rather than merely absorbed. This new technology, polaroton superfluid plasma, was developed with technical aid from the Sundaran and made the vessel drastically more durable than any design ever even dreamed of. It also allowed the engineers and scientists of Project Aegis to outfit the Athena with a powerful new class of weapon. A weapon so powerful that it quickly became known simply as an overkill beam. Utilizing the new shielding technology, nearly equal quantities of deuterium and anti-deuterium were mixed producing uh, an extremely energetic reaction that was confined, rectified, and released. <sighs> the resulting beam could easily destroy even a large asteroid or comet, or several continents. These extremely powerful beams were complemented by smaller turreted particle beam cannons, and by phased uh, laser and gravity photonic arrays. The phased arrays also served a dual role as the ship's primary line of defense, its first line of defense, able to vaporize or deflect incoming projectiles respectively long before they reached the plasma shield. As a secondary defensive measure, the hull was also armored with a multi-layer composite, 3 meters thick over most of the surface and 6 meters thick over the drive ring. The drive ring, with its thicker armor and sheer bulk, supplied additional protection where the centrifuge came closest to the outside hull. The armor consisted of several layers of steel, graphene aerogel, woven carbon and boron nitrogen nanotubes, high density plastics, thin aluminum alloy whipple plates, and a quasi crystal micrometeorite resistant outer coating. And lastly, as an economical yet effective defense against long-range fusion or antimatter missiles, the Athena was equipped with so-called Kirkland mines. These are high acceleration, solid core antimatter or chemical rockets able to maneuver rapidly in any direction and simply get in the way of incoming high-speed missiles, letting uh, kinetic energy do the rest. The Athena also sported numerous plasma-based paragravity coils, able to nullify accelerations of up to 2,000 Earth gravities. However, rather than use its energy-hungry coils to provide an artificial gravity, the vessel was instead equipped with a habitat centrifuge, some 223 meters in diameter, providing an outward centrifugal acceleration of one Earth gravity. Housed inside were the crew quarters, two of the vessel's three command centers, life support, and anything else that preferred gravity. This allowed the Athena to perform extended missions without draining its fuel tanks. With the approval and subsequent unveiling of the design, there was a mass outcry against its construction. Many said that the Earth had had enough war, that such horrendously powerful and dangerous vessels were of the past. In response, the Sundaran made a now famous, or infamous, public announcement. In front of approximately 70% of what was then a world population of almost 11 billion, they announced that not only was terrestrial humanity not alone in the galaxy, but that a particularly nasty race of conquerors had already made exploratory flights through the soul system.
This sent shockwaves around the world, and for the next year, the Earth looked as though it might fall into a chaos as bad as that during the war. As to Russia, humanity slowly recovered from the shock. A worldwide drive emerged a passion of frightening intensity to develop and build new and faster spaceships of even greater range. It was during this period, which was being called a new golden age, thanks to the economical prosperity created by the research and construction boom, that the event called GA-038-2 occurred. With horror and dread, all of humanity, Sundaran and Terran alike, Look toward the stars, waiting for the prognosis. Fortunately, or perhaps unfortunately, nothing was detected in the direction of the anomaly. No marauding alien warship, no dark matter clump or stable micro black hole, nothing. With this, it was decided the development of dedicated modern warships was of the utmost priority. If E.T. could come here, then humanity needed to be able to defend itself. Construction of the Athena began early 2034 CE, and by 2038 the first vessel floated out of the shipyards of the still under construction orbital ring, being built around Earth. By 2042 there were already 10 such vessels built, and twice that number under construction. It was estimated that by 2050, there may be as many as 200 Athenas and similar such vessels. But will this prove sufficient to protect humanity? Thank you for watching. With your support of Astronax on Patreon.com, you will be a part of humanity's spacefaring future. As promised, our next video will be about dark matter drives. This time we will be delving into the astounding and absurd notion of utilizing the mysterious dark matter for power and propulsion. Until next time, keep wondering about space.